Today I'm going to show you how to build an authentic tree root Canadian Edison light bulb chandelier. Whoop. So I'll give you a little bit of background on this build. This build started a couple of months ago when I was on vacation in Bob Cajun with my family. We had a bonfire and we found this, this tree root on the side of the river. It looked cool, it was destroyed, it was all muddy, it was covered in spiders, it was covered in garbage. We were doing a bit of that and then I pulled it out of the river and decided to bring it home and build something out of it. I'm gonna break this video down into two parts. The first part is what I've already done. The second part of the video is what still needs to be done. So you can see that it's already painted, it's already been sanded down, somewhat finished. Uh, I've already put the uh, electrical box in here. I've done some of the work in terms of getting the light fixtures mounted, drilling the holes for the threaded rod, and drilling the holes for the wiring that's gonna go around these, these big pieces here. Once I dragged it home from Bob Cajun, brought it into the garage, power washed it, power washed all these areas, power washed the underside of it, flipped it upside down. Then I grabbed a wire brush, uh, a wire spin brush, put it on my drill, and just ground into all of these sections, making sure all the moss, all the dirt, all the grime from the years it had been sitting beside the river was all gone. Once it was super clean, I had to look at it from different angles and figure out what pieces to keep and what pieces to chop. You can see that there's a lot of variation in, in the size and the shape and the aesthetic of the root itself. So some of the pieces that I had to chop off, I chopped because they were either too long, they were too fragile to survive the build process, or they were just kind of ugly. They didn't look good. After removing a lot of the bits and pieces, I had to level it out. So I leveled the top and the bottom. To level the top, I used a sawzall with a long multi-purpose blade. Started from one side and worked my way across. It was a pretty rough cut. Then I grabbed my belt sander, sanded it right down to where it was as level as it could have been. Then I grabbed my router, routed out the inside of where the electrical box is going to go, to the rough shape at least. And after that, I grabbed a set of chisels and finished off the entire inside of where the electrical box fits right now so that it was a nice tight fit. I knew I wanted to accomplish a few things. I wanted to make sure that it was symmetrical, as symmetrical as possible, even though it's very organic, top to bottom, left to right. I also wanted to make sure that it wasn't too heavy for the ceiling mount. This thing weighs probably about 30, 40 pounds, but I may need to reinforce the ceiling fixture to make sure that this thing doesn't fall down. We're gonna hang Edison bulbs off, off of these. So I'm gonna put five or six Edison bulbs on wire around these. I'm gonna put some notches in here so they sit comfortably, put some staples on top, and then that will look fantastic. Once I test fit the wiring, I drilled holes for the Edison lights in locations that were as concealed as possible. I wanted to, the wiring to look like it was a natural extension of the root itself. So I wanted it to look like it was gonna come through these smaller areas here, kind of inset into the root ball, and wind its way around the outer section of the root. And so here we are. The majority of the work is done. I need to add the Edison bulbs, and then I need to connect all the wiring in the wiring harness and test fit it on the ceiling. Let's see how that looks. I will mention that I used an oil-based paint and primer with an HVLP spray gun to paint the root and added a matte clear coat to keep it looking natural. I didn't want a high shine or glossy finish because the purpose of the build was to make the root look as natural as possible. I love that this chandelier was originally a piece of driftwood that was fished out of Northern Ontario. It's a beautiful example of what can be done with locally sourced material if you get creative with it. Tomorrow we'll be exploring an old abandoned German machine shop, so subscribe to see that episode of Bayfire Builds. And later this week, I finished the Skidoo trailer and give a total cost breakdown of whether or not I made or lost money on that build. If you have any questions or comments about any of the stuff that we do on the show, please let me know, put them in the comments. And if you like what you see, hammer the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell. We have lots of content coming up every couple of days. You don't want to miss it.